More than 100,000 people have been ordered to evacuate in Russia and Kazakhstan. Now, the region is facing its worst flooding in at least seven decades. And this after swiftly melting snow-swelled rivers beyond bursting point. Here's a report. Flood sirens blared in Russian cities on Tuesday as over 100,000 people in both Russia and Kazakhstan were ordered to evacuate. In some of the worst flooding in 70 years, swiftly melting snow across the Ural Mountains, Siberia and areas of Kazakhstan has swelled major rivers, some rising by metres in hours to the highest levels ever recorded. The Ural River, Europe's third largest, burst through an embankment dam on Friday, flooding the city of Orsk, just south of the Ural Mountains. Yes, problem. Downstream, water levels in Orenburg, a city of around half a million, were rising with peak levels expected on Wednesday. As the Tobol River rises, people in the city of Kurgan have been warned to evacuate immediately, and Governor Vadim Shumkov urged residents to take the warning seriously. The wider region is home to around 800,000, with water levels in some parts of the Tobol rising 29 inches in just two hours. More than 19,000 people are at risk in Kurgan, the TASS news agency reported. Emergencies were declared in Orenburg, Kurgan and Tumen, a major oil-producing region of western Siberia. President Vladimir Putin has been monitoring the floods from Moscow, but anger boiled over in Orsk when at least 100 Russians begged the Kremlin chief to help and chanted, shame on you, at local officials who they said had done too little. The head of the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations, Alexander Kurenkov, flew to Orenburg region on Tuesday to monitor the situation after being tasked to do so by Putin, the ministry said. The ministry added preventative measures are being taken and rescue teams have been strengthened. It was not immediately clear why the annual snowmelt had made this year's floods so bad. Scientists say climate change has made flooding more frequent worldwide. Well, floods have also battered southeast England. A combination of high tides and strong winds have led to flooding across the United Kingdom. Holiday homes in West Sussex were seen submerged. Take a look. Well, Swiss women have scripted history by winning a landmark climate case in Europe. The top court in the continent ruled that the Swiss government has violated the rights of its citizens by failing to combat climate change. Take a look at this report. The European Court of Human Rights ruled in favour of a group of elderly Swiss women on Tuesday who had argued that their government's inadequate efforts to combat climate change put them at risk of dying during heat waves. The verdict, which cannot be appealed, is a potential turning point for climate action. It could compel the Swiss government to take greater action on reducing emissions, like revising Switzerland's 2030 emissions reductions targets to get in line with the Paris Agreement. Anne Mara is the co-president of the group that filed a climate lawsuit. The ruling today is a historic ruling, and we are really, really happy to have carried this all the way to the European Court of Human Rights. Our country should do what it has not done until now, meaning to take ambitious measures to protect our health and protect the future for all of us. Court President Siofra O'Leary said the Swiss government had violated the human right to a private and family life by failing to put in place sufficient domestic policies to tackle climate change. This included a failure to quantify 
through a carbon budget or otherwise, national greenhouse gas emissions limitations. The Swiss government said it will now analyse the ruling and review the measures Switzerland will take in the future. The European Court's ruling, brought by more than 2,000 elderly women, could have a ripple effect across Europe and beyond, setting a precedent for how courts deal with the rising tide of climate litigation. But in a sign of the complexities of climate litigation, the court rejected two similar climate-related cases. The first, brought by six Portuguese youth against 32 European governments, and another by the former mayor of a low-lying French coastal town. Climate activist Greta Thunberg attended the hearing in support of the Portuguese group. And this is only the beginning of climate litigation. All over the world, more and more people are taking their government to court, holding their, them responsible for their actions. The cases before the 17-judge panel in Strasbourg, France, joined a growing trend of communities bringing climate lawsuits against governments with arguments resting on human rights law. The pace of deforestation in Brazil's Amazon has decreased by 40% in the first three months of 2024, as compared to the previous year. Now, this comes after a 50% drop in deforestation in 2023. Preliminary satellite data from space research agency INPE shows that 492 square kilometers of the Amazon were cleared in that period. Environment Minister Marina Silva said at an event in capital Brasilia that this data is highly significant. Based on this data, we had a 40% reduction in deforestation compared to the first three months of 2023, which is something very significant, highly significant. Silva also said that the government intends to invest the equivalent of $145 million to fight deforestation in 70 Brazilian locations. In 2022, these areas were responsible for almost 80% of Amazon's deforestation. She added that Brazil was also working on a proposal to create a global fund to finance forest conservation. Australian researchers are using an underwater drone called Hydrus to survey the Great Barrier Reef. The AI-enabled underwater drone is allowing Australian researchers to conduct more accurate and regular surveys of the impacts of climate change on the reef. Our next report gets you the details. This underwater drone called Hydrus is using artificial intelligence to study coral reefs. Australia's Great Barrier Reef has been hit by a major coral bleaching event, usually triggered by warmer ocean waters. With the help of Hydrus, marine scientists aim to conduct more accurate and regular surveys to better understand the impacts of climate change on the world's most extensive reef ecosystem. Melanie Olsen leads the Reef Works program at the Australian Institute of Marine Science. Traditionally, we've done this with dive teams. However, dive teams can only see so much and go so far. And that's where we've had to augment our survey methods to include the use of robotics, just to enable us to scale, to go deeper, to operate in areas where predators like crocodiles and bull sharks and jellyfish now routinely reside. Operating fully autonomously, hydras have a range of roughly 5.5 miles for up to three hours. It can go as deep as 10,000 feet underwater and capture video with a 4K camera. The drone, developed by Advanced Navigation, also has an acoustic modem, forward-facing sonar and AI-powered navigation. The company's subsea product manager, Peter Baker, says their technology is being used to build 3D maps of the reef. We're working on coral mapping with the Australian Institute of Marine Science. And what they're trying to do is map areas of coral to detect change within those uh, areas, which they can then use to extrapolate and model the entire reef. One of the benefits of having a robotic system is that it goes back to that same location every single time, and it takes the same photo from the same orientation every single time, which is really, really difficult to achieve with a human diver. So 
if you want to have a lot of scientific robustness to the data that you're collecting time and time again, a solution like Hydrus adds that. Using AI image processing, Hydrus can classify and analyze the images on board. Because the system is fully autonomous, it means the decision making has to happen on board the vehicle. And to do that, you need AI. So we have AI sensors on board that are taking things like the camera feed in, and then they're able to make smart decisions. Stretching more than 1,400 miles along Australia's northeastern coast, the Great Barrier Reef has seen six localized bleaching events since 1998. Bleaching is triggered by warmer ocean waters, which cause corals to expel the colorful algae living in their tissues and turn white. A bleached coral can recover if waters cool, but if ocean temperatures remain high for longer periods, it will die. Experts have tied the mass bleaching events to climate change. We're in the midst of another mass coral bleaching event right now, which means the Great Barrier Reef is at threat from climate change, and that's why Ames is investing heavily in trying to expand our monitoring systems to be able to collect the data that decision makers need to be informed. Every spring, Japan erupts in a dazzling display of pink and white. The iconic cherry blossoms called Sakura are a national treasure, drawing millions of tourists each year. But climate change is casting an ominous shadow on them this year. Take a look. The cherry blossoms are in full bloom. The cameras are busy and so are the selfie-clicking tourists. It's my first time here. I have been meaning to come here for five years now. And today I actually made it. I think it's beautiful. The weather is also perfect today. It's very crowded of course, but apart from that, I think it's really beautiful. It's really great. It's really something unique, I must say. And I don't think it happens that often here in Germany. It reminds me of Japan, which is very in at the moment. It really is nice and a great show of nature. Viewing the cherry blossoms or sakura is a tradition that typically attracts people to parks having picnics, singing and drinking under cherry trees. But this year the blooms arrived early and that is a cause of concern. A new study says cherry blossoms are appearing nearly 11 days earlier than usual. Kyoto saw the peak bloom on April 1st itself, the earliest in recorded history. The early bloom is a warning sign of climate change. Warmer temperatures fueled by rising industrial emissions are disrupting the natural flowering cycle of the plants and the trend is expected to continue, with studies showing earlier blooms across the globe. London's historic parks are also experiencing a similar early bloom of cherry trees. The same is the case with Munich, where it began to bloom early, which are indicators of early spring. The cherry blossoms herald spring season, but in the present times, their early arrival is also a stark reminder of the rapid climate change. Bureau Report, we on World is One. With that, we come to the end of We on Climate Tracker, but global news continue on the bulletins. So stick with us.